Welcome back to Fruits of the Spirit. Today's question is, what is the blood of Jesus? In this video, I'm going to be looking at what the blood of Jesus is by looking at what happened in the Garden of Eden and how that affected mankind and why Jesus was then needed to bring mankind back to perfection. As we know, in Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 27, God created man in his image and called him good or perfect. Now, if we move to Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 to 17, you'll see that God gave Adam, the man, and Eve, the woman, one rule. They were not allowed, under any circumstances, to eat from a tree that had the knowledge of good and evil. If they did, they would cease to be perfect, and then would be corruptible, which eventually ends in death. If you take a look at James chapter 1, verse 15, we see that there. Then, when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Then Satan the devil, in the form of a snake, in Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 6, was in that tree one day, and started to talk to Eve about it. Eve then ate the fruit, and then she gave some to Adam as well. So, a major problem with what happened here is that instead of Adam and Eve going back to God to talk about it, they just ate the fruit. They went behind God's back to use their own judgment to figure out if the fruit was worth eating. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 19, as promised, a death sentence was passed upon them and their children. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The close relationship man had with God had been broken because of that sin, and the privilege of that relationship eternal life was lost as well. And so, from that day forward, every human continued to die, since the debt from that first sin had not been paid. Adam was a perfect soul, but he ceased from being perfect when he sinned. Now, for mankind to become perfect again, something has to be paid so that they can receive their perfect status back. This is called atonement. Atonement is when someone is unable to redeem themselves from sin, so, the life of another creature stands in the place of that. Mankind was in that situation because no one was perfect enough to atone for the previous sin since we're all from Adam. The psalmist told us this in Psalm chapter 49 verses 6 to 7, where it says, They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. Job also explained the fact that we humans cannot atone for our own sin in Job chapter 14 verse 4, which says, Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Jesus Christ told a story that fit the situation mankind was in in Matthew chapter 18 verses 23 to 25. The king, representing God Almighty, had a servant, representing mankind, who had an unpayable debt, representing man's sin. Hence why the Israelites offered animal sacrifices year after year without end. Life is in the blood, see Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. So that's what makes the atonement an atonement. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. The animals were also not enough to pay for the original sin, because they're not even equivalent to a regular human life, as God said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. The book of Hebrews also stated how animals cannot atone for sin in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Now this is where Jesus Christ comes in. Jesus Christ is a perfect soul, so that would fully pay for what happened in the past with Adam. Jesus Christ was killed but you're not supposed to die unless you committed a sin. See Romans chapter 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. He died for a sin he did not commit, and because of that, God, in his infinite love and mercy, because he did not really need to do this, let man's sin be atoned for by the death of Jesus. By this, Jesus Christ's unjust death was turned into a ransom for mankind. St. John put this wonderfully in 1 John chapter 4 verse 9 to 10. Let's read that together. 
In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us, and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. So, to conclude, the blood of Jesus is important to us because a sin was committed in the Garden of Eden, which caused man to lose their perfect status and relationship with God. Due to that, an atonement was needed to pay off the debt. No regular human on earth is worth enough to pay that debt, but Jesus Christ is perfect, so his death was enough for that debt to be paid. And with that, I will end here on the question, what is the blood of Jesus? If you learned something from this video or just liked it, then please consider subscribing, liking the video, and clicking the notification bell so you can see many more of my videos in the future. Have a great day and God bless you.